so that's good, I can't see anybody. <laughs> I was hoping for a podium because I've grown used to a podium at other meetings. <laughs> so I'll just hold my notes in my hands and say good evening. Welcome to Last Door's 25th anniversary. Woo! For those of you, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Louise Cooksey, administrator of Last Door. I'm formerly um, the senior counselor, formerly the youth door program manager, formerly chief cook and bottle washer, and my most important and biggest job, David's wife. <laughs> now that we've bought a house, I actually might want to get married. Stop being a miss. get them there. I might be able to get them a little bit further. <laughs> I am just really happy to be here tonight and pleased and grateful to see the many supporters who've shown up to help us celebrate this 25 years anniversary. Welcome especially to His Worship, Mayor Wayne Wright. Welcome to the alumni, many who I see recent and not so recent, the families whose lives have been affected, the many people with whom Last Door does business, our various colleagues who stand against, uh, stand for us in the fight against addiction, and the wonderful staff, I love the staff, who, who work with dedication and commitment consistently. Thank you all for your wonderful contributions, and on a personal note, thanks for helping make the last 20 years of my, 25 years of my life truly meaningful and wonderful. slideshow presentation and it, it dates way back to the old days. I'm sure you'll see some people that you know, some memories. Hopefully it'll stimulate some good feelings and uh, and uh, you're going to see people you know and I hope that you really enjoy that slide presentation. If you don't, talk to Blair. He's responsible. <laughs> and thinking about what to say tonight, many, many thoughts went through my mind. Not how many people would be here, but lots of thoughts. And taking a cue from Plato, who said the beginning is the most important part of the work, I'll start at the beginning. To say that Last Door's beginnings were humble would be an understatement. Last Door, like many community service agencies, started with people who identified a need and responded to it. Going back in time to 1984, the hair was big. The most serious recession since the Great Depression was in full swing. The World Health Organization was starting to warn us about AIDS. Bill Gates was getting Microsoft off the ground and the drug of choice in North America was cocaine. I'm sure some of you remember. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you don't and are blessed not to. In their book, Moral Panics, The Social Construction of Deviance, Good said it's possible that in no other decade has the issue of drugs occupied such a huge and troubling space in public consciousness. Little did he know that 20, 25 years later, we could actually be saying the same thing. Drugs have become an epidemic. Instead, drug use was being termed the social problem of the decade. It's going to be the social problem of the millennium, I think. Against this backdrop, Last Door came into being. It was an uphill struggle in many ways. While the idea of addicts helping addicts help themselves was not new, or the idea of recovery houses was not unique, other than Last Door, there was actually only one other recovery house in the Lower Mainland, and that was Last Door's parent um, program, Turning Point. So thanks to Turning Point for helping start out. Last Door was, uh, after, very shortly after opening, Last Door was on its own, no longer part of the Turning Point organization. Um, at this point, I'd like to mention Jim Ross and Lance Riley. They were the original dynamic duo of Last Door. They started it out in New Westminster, and uh, recently they came out for, I think, the Turning Point anniversary, and it was really good to see them. Jim came to Last Door for a tour, and he turned to David at the end of it and said, with tears in his eyes, this is what we hoped Last Door could be. And that was a real tribute to us, because that... That's what we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be something good. And the fact that Jim, who had started it, would see that it had become something he could be proud of made us happy too. So, um, Last Door's original home at 433 Carnarvon, those of you who are from New Westminster may know it a little bit. It, it was called the West Ham Manor. 
And in its glory days, it was the uh, original house in New Westminster that Captain Philpot, I believe his name was, it was his house. And it was a great house, but it wasn't meant to house 20 addicts. It had one bathroom, 20 guys. It had a little tiny kitchen that used to be a pantry. And it was quite the deal down there. But, you know, as Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And I guess David shares something with Einstein because one day he came home from volunteering at Last Door and said that he wanted to take it over. And I was like, but why? It's just a bunch of surly guys sitting around smoking cigarettes. And he said to me, it could be something, Lou. It could be something. And in his imagination, he imagined it would be, and it is. It's something. So thank you, David. Um, needless to say, there was no money. Is there ever any money for nonprofits? Money's the bane of the social service industry. We hate money, we love money, and it always, always eludes us. By 1988, that's a considerable time after Last Door was started, we realized that in order to survive, we would have to make some changes. And one of those changes was to form a board of directors and get incorporated as a nonprofit society, get a charity license, and start accessing some of those grants. One of our founding board members, we're happy to say, is still on our board today. His name is Dr. <coughs> Jim Grant. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. But I'd like to thank Jim in absentia for the work that he's done and the support that he gave us. If he was here, I'm sure he'd be crying right now because that's what he does. <laughs> but when you work in our business to see people feeling about what you're doing, that's important. And Jim's always done that. He's always felt for last door uh, when everybody else thought we were just a biker clubhouse. <laughs> The Society was incorporated in 1989, just in time to facilitate and spearhead the move to um, 8th Street from Carnarvon. Just like all the other moves and big things that we've ever had to do at Last Door, just like tonight, the move was a collective effort of board, of staff, and of the residents. They played a big role in it. And one of the people that really helped us move to 8th Street, helped us find that house, get that mortgage, at a time when mortgage rates were at 24%.